Hello, my name is Joshua Mugabe. I welcome you to Biology Lights. And in this session, we are going to talk about plant reproduction. The principal role of a flower in the life cycle of a plant is a attracting insects b producing seeds c producing pollen d producing nectar The most accurate statement is B. A flower's principal role is seed production. Name the parts A to J shown in this drawing on a half flower of a stitch wall. A is the stigma, B style, C sepal, D petal, E anthers, F filament, G stamen, H ovale, I ovule, and J receptacle what is part a the male gamete in a flowering plant part a the male gamete in a flowering plant is the pollen grain strictly the gamete is the male nucleus in the pollen grain what is part b the female gamete in a flowering plant Part B, the female gamete is the egg cell in the ovule. Pollination is the transfer of dash from the dash to the dash in a flower. In cross pollination, the dash from a flower on one dash is transferred to the dash of another dash of the same species. The words to pick from are anthers, ovules, stigma, plant, flower, pollen, ovary, petal, style, receptacle, and stamens. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anthers or stamens to the stigma in a flower. In cross-pollination, the pollen from a flower of one plant is transferred to the stigma of another plant on the same, of the same species. In a flowering plant, 
fertilization occurs when the dash of the dash fuses with the dash of the dash after fertilization the dash becomes the dash and the dash becomes the dash in a flowering plant fertilization occurs when the nucleus of the pollen grain fuses with the nucleus of the egg cell after fertilization the ovule becomes the seed and the ovary becomes the fruit which of the following statements is correct in flowering plants a pollination can take place without fertilization b fertilization can take place without pollination c pollination and fertilization are the same d Pollination and fertilization must occur at the same time. Statement A is correct, though normally fertilization will follow pollination if the pollen and stigma are compatible. Which of the following characteristics would you regard as adaptation to pollination by bees? A. White or colored petals. B. Light, smooth pollen grains. C. Spiky or sticky pollen grains. D anthers and stigma inside the flower e anthers and stigma protruding from the flower f small green petals g production of nectar h production of pollen i production of scent Characteristics which are regarded as adaptation to pollination by insects are A. White or colored petals C. Spiky or sticky pollen grains D. Anthers and stigma inside the flower D. Production of nectar and I production of scent complete the drawing to show what has to happen before fertilization occur The drawing should show a pollen tube growing from the pollen grain to reach the micropyle of the ovule. The drawing shows seeds or fruits of different plants. Part A. From the appearance of the structures, make a guess at how each one is dispersed, giving reason for your answer.
A and D have seeds dispersed by the wind. E and F are dispersed by animals. B and C are also wind dispersed. The drawing shows seeds of roots of different plants. Part B. What are the advantages to a plant of an effective method of seed dispersal? A and D have fluffy hairs act as parachute. E and F have hooks which catch in the animal's fur. B has bract which functions as a wing, slowing down the fruit's rate of fall. C has a sensor mechanism in which seeds are shaken out of the fruit capsule when wind sways the long stalk. The root of the pea seedling is marked with equally spaced lines as shown here. Draw what you'd expect to see in two days time. If the root, part A, grew only from the tip, part B, grew uniformly along its length, part C, grew only at the top, and part D, did not grow. So the structures will appear like that. Part A, growth at the tip. Part B, uniform growth. Part C, growth at the top. And Part D, no growth. What conditions do most seeds need in order to begin germination? Most seeds need water, oxygen, and certain minimum temperature or warmth to start germinating. What other conditions do seedlings need to continue growth to mature plants? To grow to maturity, the seedlings will also need mineral salts from the soil and sunlight for photosynthesis. How would you design, in principle, an experiment to test the hypothesis that a certain variety of later seeds needed daylight in order to germinate? You will need as large the same sample large sample of seeds the seeds would be provided with water and suitable temperature 
the seeds in a suitable container would be placed in a light proof box for a period long enough to allow germination. The box or cupboard would not be opened during this period. The same number of seeds from the same bunch would be given identical conditions of moisture and temperature, but placed in daylight for the same period of time. At the end, the number of seeds which germinated in each case would be counted and compared. Fig represents a piece seed split open to show its structure. Name the parts A to C and state the function of each. A is a prunium. This one will form the plant is shoot. B is a radical. This one will form the plant is first root. And C is a coat lead on. This one stores food, mainly starch and protein. Fig represents a peace seedling five days after germination. Name the parts D to H. D is a plumule. E is a tester. F is a lateral root. D is a radical and H is root hairs. The early stages of germination take place in the soil where there is little or no light for photosynthesis. How does the seedling obtain materials for its growth and energy during needs during this time? In the early stages of germination, the seedlings derive the materials for its growth and energy from food stored in the cotyledons for cotyledonous plants. In an experiment to investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of germination. Place 10 soaked peas in each of three flower pots containing moist sand. One pot is placed in a refrigerator at four degrees Celsius. One is placed in a cupboard at room temperature, about 18 degrees Celsius and the third is placed in an incubator at 25 degrees Celsius. Leave them for a week. Check each day that the sand is kept moist. Part A, how would you judge the results? Part A, to compare the extent of germination at each temperature, you would need to measure the height of the shoot and the length of the roots of the seedlings 
from each pot. The measurement for each temperature would then be averaged and compared. You could also count the number of leaves and lateral roots, if any. Part B. Why was the pot at room temperature kept in a cupboard rather than on a laboratory bench? Part B. Because the seeds in the refrigerator and incubator would be in darkness, it was necessary to keep the ones at room temperature in darkness as well. Otherwise, any difference in germination might be attributed to a difference in light rather than to a difference in temperature. Starch is one of the most common storage products in seeds. What happens to the starch before it can be used by the germinating seed? Starch is insoluble and has to be converted by enzyme to soluble sugars before it can be transported and used in the seedling. The diagram represents an experiment to test the hypothesis that seeds need oxygen in order to germinate. Part A. What is the liquid in A and what does it do? Part A. The liquid in flask A is a mixture of pyrogallic acid and sodium hydroxide in water. This solution absorbs oxygen and carbon dioxide from the air in the flask. The diagram represents an experiment to test the hypothesis that seeds need oxygen in order to germinate. Part B. What is the liquid in B and what does it do? Part B. The liquid in B is sodium hydroxide solution. It absorbs carbon dioxide from the air in the flask. Part C. Which of the two flasks represents the control and what is its purpose? Part C, flask B represents the control. It shows that if oxygen is present, seeds can germinate even in those artificial conditions and also in absence of carbon dioxide if sodium hydroxide is used. Part D. What results would you expect from a number one 
if oxygen is necessary for germination. Part D, Roman number one, if oxygen is necessary for germination, the seeds should germinate in B, but not in A. Part D, what results would you expect? Roman number two, if oxygen is not necessary for germination. Roman number two, part D, if oxygen is unnecessary, the seeds should germinate in both flasks. What difference would you expect to see between pea seedlings grown for 10 days in total darkness and pea seedlings grown in the light for the same period of time? The seedlings grown in darkness will have long, thin, white stems, long internodes, and small unopened leaves. The seedlings grown in the light will have shorter, thicker greenish stems, short internodes. The leaves will have opened up and will be green and larger than those of seedlings in darkness. Hello friends, thank you very much for participating in Biology Lights. I encourage you to subscribe.